Good morning, I'm Bishop Carl J. Van. Thank you for watching our Faith to Faith broadcast. We pray that this word will be received in your hearts on today and that the cycle of revelation will work in your life. You know, the Lord has sent his word to work a seven cycle of revelation in our lives. It first comes as information, and after information, illumination, after illumination, inspiration, after inspiration, new revelation, after new revelation, uh, uh, realization, and after realization, transformation, after transformation, manifestation. The Lord has given us his word to not only be information, the first step, but to go all the way to manifestation, that is to become material in this world, to be a realization in this world. So we pray that it be a blessing to you. Enjoy. One verse for now, I'll read another verse in a moment. But I want you to read together with me this verse. John 18, chapter verse 38, out of the King James Version. Let's all read together. Pilate says unto him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Jesus was the embodiment of truth. Jesus is the embodiment of truth. Jesus is the personification of truth. He has said earlier, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the truth, not a truth, but the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So now in John, the 18th chapter, verse 38, this passage records what may have been the last intimate personal conversation that Jesus had with another individual before he was crucified. In this exchange between the Lord Jesus Christ and the Roman governor Pontius Pilate, we see two men with opposing agendas. Pilate comes across as one who is agitated after having been placed in the middle of what he sees as a religious dispute between the Jews. His sarcasm and short answers reveal his irritation. Jesus, on the other hand, uses this conversation to reveal his real identity to Pilate. So when asked if he is really the king of the Jews, Jesus, Jesus pulls no punches, uh, but responds in the affirmative. Let me read verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king? To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Man, I can't wait to get to that message. That's, we're going to share that in a subsequent message. It may not be entitled the same, and it may be, but anyway, everyone who hears his voice, everyone of the truth hears his voice. Can't wait to get to that. We're going to be enjoying this uh, subject on truth. Amen. There's a lot that the Lord is giving me on it. Anyway, uh, Pilate asked a question after Jesus says this, born out of pure cynicism. He asked, what is truth? Pilate wasn't expecting an answer, and he probably would have been surprised if he had received one. Pilate was saying, in today's language, whatever. Can you say, whatever? whatever. That's what Pilate was saying. Whatever. Whatever is not what he said, but it is a good summation of what Pilate meant. Pilate is trying to dismiss Jesus without making a decision. One man worships Allah, another worships a cow. In the whatever world, all religions are the same. Even the religion of no religion, whatever. What's true for you may not be true for me, they say. Have you ever heard of somebody say, my truth? That's, see, that's another message in this series. We're going to talk about later in, subsequent, in a subsequent message. My truth, your truth, 
his truth. <laughs> Amen. And the truth. Uh, I may not be subtitled that, but that's the essence of it. And so for today, what is truth? So somebody may say, what's true for you may not be true for me. It doesn't matter what you believe so long as you are sincere. Oh, man, that's another message. <laughs> We're going to devote one Sunday on being sincere. But sincere doesn't mean that you're right. Being sincere doesn't automatically mean you're right. Amen. There are a lot of people who were sincere who are in hell. They were sincerely wrong. So, so they just shrugged the shoulders and they said, uh, whatever. This is the modern view of truth. Some years ago, when the Dick Cavett show was popular, the Archbishop of Canterbury was speaking with actress James Fonda on that show. And the Archbishop said, Jesus is the Son of God, you know. So James Fonda replied, Maybe he is for you, but he's not for me. Hmm. Truth does not work that way. You see, truth is truth whether it is accepted or not. You may not believe in gravity. I don't believe in gravity. I'm going to go out there on, on a 16th floor building and I'm going to jump off. And see what happens. Just because you don't believe the truth doesn't make it the truth. Right. Who are you? <laughs> you created the world. You caused the sun to shine. Did I say it right? Okay. Just because you don't believe the truth doesn't make it not the truth. All right? You're not the truth. Jesus said he was the truth. You, you're not Jesus. Until you make a world, until you keep the sun shining, until you keep the earth on its ashes, on its orbit, then you can't twist the truth. So you don't, see I'm preaching another message. My truth, his truth, her truth, the truth. Let me get off that. <laughs> So, uh, thank the Lord that, to Jane Fonda's credit, she got saved. Praise the Lord. And she goes to a church in Atlanta, Georgia, and she's taught the word of God. But if she had never accepted Jesus as the son of God, he still would be the son of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Do you hear me, saints? You see, truth relating to man is progressive. No man has all the truth. And so if someone ever tells you we preach the whole truth, they don't know what they're talking about. No man has the whole truth. Not even the apostle Paul knew the whole truth. It's quiet in here. Is that because y'all listening? No man has the whole truth. So this is, this is why a, a, a novice, uh, because truth is progressive, this is why a novice shouldn't be a pastor. Because he doesn't know enough. No, he hasn't learned enough to lead somebody spiritually. So he can lead somebody into error because he himself doesn't know enough to lead anybody. Truth is progressive. I love what Proverbs 4 and 18 says. Proverbs 4 and 18 says, for the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So that is as we continue to follow the Lord. Then we get closer to the truth. 
and we look more and more like the Lord and we shine more and more like him. Hallelujah. But truth is progressive. It comes by revelation and knowledge. This is why I don't preach what I don't know. There are some things I don't know and those things I don't know, I don't preach. Because I don't know it all. Nobody, no man knows it all. And Paul tells us this, if they will put 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verse 12 on the light vision screen. Look at what Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verse 12. He says, for now we see through a glass darkly. We, we see as if things are veiled. We don't see as clearly as they should be. Because we're in a contaminated world. But now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face. This then means when we see Jesus. When we see Jesus, there will be no veil. There will be no sin contamination to, to, to dim our view. We'll be able to see clearly on that day when we're with Jesus. Look at what Paul says. Now I know in part. Paul says, I don't know it all. I only know in part. Bishop Van doesn't know it all. I only know in part. Truth is progressive for us in this life. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. Paul is saying on that day, it'll be different. Oh yes, it'll be different. And so, as Peter says, we're to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. The more we grow in grace, the more we grow in the knowledge of the Lord, the more we get closer to the truth. And the more we get to the truth, the more we walk in the blessing and favor of God because Jesus is the truth. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see... Demons, they frequent in lies. If you're a liar, demons have access to you. Because lying is their circuit. Jesus told uh, uh, his accusers in John the 8th chapter, verse 44, ye are your devil, you are your father, the devil who was a liar, and he's the father of lies. He was a liar from the beginning, and the truth is not in him. And so uh, a person who lies, whenever you lie, you open the door for a demon. Demons traffic and circuit lies because that's their nature. Like stink on a caucus, like it attract flies, so does a lie attract the devil and demons. Ah, do you hear me, saints? So you don't want to get into lying because it brings the devil and, and the devil is an agent of damage and destruction. And so if you are be, get into a lie, you're inviting damage and destruction. You want to stay truthful. The truth is of God. Ah, now the eight o'clock is going to be mad at me because I didn't share that. <laughs> what is truth? You see, this is, this is why no man, no man uh, has all, all the truth. And so when we share the gospel, this is why I take you to the scriptures, have them confirmed by at least two passages. Because the Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. You see, do you know why we have two eyes? And then after I shared this at the 8 o'clock, I realized that 
And our optometrist, Dr. Dave, was here. He's an optometrist. And, and I said, Lord, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting in dangerous ground now. I'm getting in the field of an expert. But he confirmed everything I said. The reason why we have two eyes is for death perception. You see, with one eye, you can't see uh, uh, everything in a wider periphery. You don't have that death perception. Both eyes working together gives you that death perception. And so, uh, use two scriptures because one scripture won't give you that death perception that's needed. I'm going to share a scripture with you later that taken out of its context, uh, people have erred. And so you need at least the confirming scripture and to keep that in context. Do you know why you have two legs? You got two legs to give you balance. If you have one leg, anybody can push you over. And so you can't establish your truth on one scripture because it can be pushed over. It's wrong. No, two legs give you balance. And this is why out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. And balance the scriptures. The scriptures have to be balanced. Paul tells us rightly dividing the word of truth. If the word of God has to be rightly divided, it means it can be wrongly divided. And there are too many people are wrongly dividing it by taking one passage and running with it. What's the confirming scripture? Oh, glory to God. Can you say what is truth? What is truth? Truth is an object, objective standard by which reality is based. It's an objective standard. That is, it's a standard outside of you by which you measure the reality of something. When I say outside of you, that means your opinion doesn't matter. It's that standard anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not predicated on how you feel or how you or how what you think about it. How you feel or what you think about it doesn't uh, uh, mean that something is true or not. Amen. Truth is that which is real because it was real originally. In order to discover truth, you have to look at origin. Since God is the originator of all origin, only God can be the standard of what is true. He is the origin of it. There is no pre-origin to God. There's nobody behind God that you can go to to check on God. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's nobody you can go to and ask did the Lord know what he was doing when he did this? God has no superior. God has no boss. Oh, glory to God. And since God is the originator, then he has to be the point of reference to all that is true. The originator, then he has to be the point of reference to everything that's true. The question of truth is, what will be your standard? Will it be your emotions? The problem with that is feelings change. You're happy, you're sad. You're glad, you're mad. Feelings change. You cannot use your feelings as a measurement of truth. I know feelings are real, but you don't allow feelings to be the final arbitrator of what is true. Uh, there was um, a parable known as the uh, recent parable, not a biblical one, but a recent parable known as the parable of the blind men and the elephant. The parable of the blind men and the elephant. These blind men, they were going by their feelings. If you would look at the life vision screen, 
you'll see six blind men and an elephant. Okay, the first blind man touched the tail of an elephant. So they asked him, what is an elephant? The blind man touched the tail and said, an elephant is a rope. The next blind man touched the side of the elephant, and it was smooth and tall and big. So the second blind man said that an elephant is a wall. Then another blind man touched the leg of the elephant. And because it was thick and uh, 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 circular, he said it was a tree. He said an elephant is a tree. Then they asked uh, the fourth blind man. He felt the ears of the elephant, and it was flappy. And so the fourth blind man said that the elephant is a hand thing. Then they asked the fifth blind man, and he touched the tusk of the elephant, and he went all the way to the end and noticed that it was sharp and said that an elephant is a spear. And then finally, the sixth blind man, they asked him what an elephant was. He touched the trunk, and it was uh, round and smooth, and he said a trunk was a snake. Uh, he said the elephant was a snake. So all of them were wrong. An elephant isn't a rope. An elephant isn't a wall. An elephant isn't a spear. An elephant isn't a fan. An elephant isn't a snake. An elephant isn't a tree. An elephant is an animal. But you see, they were going by their feelings. And feelings can be wrong. You can't go by your feelings. My feelings have been wrong. And your feelings have been wrong. You've got to base truth on something more than feelings. Isaac was tricked this way. Remember when Isaac, when it was time for him to give the blessing, uh, uh, Rebecca overheard the conversation between Isaac and Esau. And so she told um, Jacob what to do to get the blessing because Esau was a hairy man. And so Jacob went and, and killed an animal and put the hairs on his uh, arms so that his father could feel him because his father was losing his sight. He said that the voice is Jacob's, but he feels like Esau. And so he went against his better judgment and decided that it was Esau when it was Jacob. He was duped by his feelings. If you walk by feelings, you stand the chance of being duped. We're not to walk by feelings. We got something greater than feelings, a truth. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can't go by your feelings. Feelings are deceptive. Oh, yes. So the essence of truth is that truth is timeless. Truth is ageless. Truth is constant. Truth cannot be modernized. If it is, it was not truth because truth doesn't change. Situations change, but we're talking about intrinsic, essential truths. They don't change. It's constant. So Paul says in 2 Corinthians the 13th chapter, verse 8, for we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Paul says we, we can't do nothing against the truth. You see, the, the, oh man, I was planning on sharing this at a later message, in a later message. But let me share it now. Oh, oh well. <laughs> truth and lie were at a pond one day. And they decided to take a swim. So both of them jumped in the pond to take a swim. Where the lie got out before truth and took truth's clothes. And so the lie went into town with truth's clothes. Looking like the truth. 
but he wasn't the truth. He was a lie. And so, so, so truth got out the pond and saw that his clothes was taken. Somebody told him that he ought to go someplace and get some clothes before he went to town. But truth said, no, I want them to know the naked truth. <laughs> the naked truth. They saw the naked truth. And what we're telling you today is the naked truth. So you can't do anything against the truth. You know, there were some preachers, God bless their hearts. They, they only taught according to revelation. But some of them were adamantly opposed to the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with speaking in other tongues. They were too proud for it, too sophisticated for it. Well, many of them have died, and now they are standing before the Lord, and they see the truth. Because you can't do nothing against the truth. The truth doesn't change. People are saying that we were born from monkeys. We evolved from apes. One day they'll know that there's a God who created us. Oh, yes. The truth will be known one day by everybody. I desire to know it now. I seek after it now. Because one day, everybody is going to know the truth. My Bible tells me that every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. So I'm confessing now. I'm bowing now. We pray that this broadcast has been a blessing to you and also ministered to your need. Come and join us. We would love to have you at one of our services. In fact, you still have time to meet us at our 8 o'clock service. Our Sunday morning services are at 8 o'clock and at 11 o'clock. And our Wednesday night services are at 7.30 p.m. My wife and I would just love to have you. And uh, if you come, if there's no position, come up to shake our hands. We'd love to just uh, tell you personally how glad that we are that you came to see us on today. All right, until next time. Come receive the word, leave and experience the difference at New Life.